Hi, my name's Steve Smith. I'm a Volkswagen holic, car collector, hoarder, whatever you want to call me. I have uh, probably 17 cars total. There's a couple here that aren't mine. There's maybe three here that aren't mine. But the 17 is what I have. There's 20 here total then. I'm originally from England. Uh, me and my brother grew up in the hot hatch era when the Mark 1 GTIs came out. We had five or six of those in England. Uh, I moved to the States for work, quickly picked up a Mark 2 GTI, and uh, that's when the obsession became stateside for me. Uh, take it to the track, I did a 1AT swap in it, uh, and finally stuffed it into the wall at, uh, on the racetracks in Michigan. And that's when things just snowballed out of control. Like, oh, there's a shell. Oh, there's another one. Started collecting Mark II, so I had spares. And then it just snowballed into everything else that I now own. Became a mechanical and electrical engineer. So I love doing my own things, learning, making stuff. This is how I am. I, I like to learn something and I'll buy the tool and do it and figure it out. Other than cars, I have a lot of parts that I collect just to, to keep my cars going. and do unique things to them. Uh, I collect things like DigiFizz clusters and Happage pop-out windows and lots of wrap parts just because they'll eventually go up in value and I'll occasionally use them on my cars. I'm trying to think what else is rare that's in there. I forget most of the time, is the thing. <laughs> Someone asked me, so you got one of these? Oh yeah, I've got one of these. Yeah. Forget about them. Um, I bought this probably 10 or 12, maybe longer years ago from uh, Brad Budo, who owns 1552. I've always wanted one. One came up for sale and I jumped on it. And... Drove it around for a bit and then I've moved all over different places in the US and just kept it and never drive it. All my friends will give me crap for it because it doesn't come out much. It's a Golf Rally. Volkswagen only made 5,070 something of the Golf Rally back in 89. Uh, most people don't realize what they are. There's maybe 15 or so in the US now, maybe a few more, there's not, not too many. Uh, other than that, it's, it's stock, well, other than the wheels, but I didn't do anything to it. This was done by previous people. Uh, the biggest difference is obviously the wide body. As most people can see, it's got boxy arches like the old E30 M3, so Volkswagen put that on there. It's all sheet metal, but it'll eventually get gone through and I'm gonna clean it up, get it painted and make it a show car. And then I'll fully like it more and drive it occasionally. This is not a, it's not a factory supercharger. The Lysum is a Swedish twin screw style supercharger that gives it the fire truck sound that some people may have heard of. I remember driving the, the rally to Cars and Coffee one time and, and some guy told me, uh, hey, it sounds like your power steering pump or something's broken. <laughs> I'm like, all right, thanks. This uh, has a synchro system, which basically the early version of the Haldex, but doesn't handle as much power. It's essentially a front wheel drive car. When the front wheels slip, it'll engage the rear. So this is the Haldex before the Haldex. <laughs> this, is, this is the synchro, which yeah, pre-Haldex. Came out in 89. Yeah, this is, this is the, uh, the Lysum supercharger I was talking about. Not the factory Grenade 60. So other than that, it's just a stock G60 motor. Just has a different charger on it. The long-term goal for this car is to build an actual limited motor. So most people probably don't know what a Golf Limited is. Um, they only made, I think, 71 of them. A 16 valve with a G60 on it from the factory. So my goal is to, to replicate that engine and put that in the rally. Try and keep the motorsport theme of a lightweight engine and not put a VR6 in like I usually do most of my cars. <laughs> so the, uh, the Silver Mark III I bought from a good friend of mine. Uh, he built this car probably back in 2011, 12-ish. Did a whole bunch of stuff to it. You can see it's got a custom wide body on it. It has a VR6 turbocharger on it. Limited slip diff, brakes, all that type of stuff. It's got the R32 interior. Guy spent a lot of money on it. And I guess he got married, had kids, and it was time to go. So to keep it within the friend circle, I bought it and had my small collection of hoarding. Uh, so I have an R32 turbo engine that will eventually be going into this. It'll get a full drivetrain swap with an R32 rear well, transmission and rear beam and everything else. And I'm aiming for around seven to 800 wheel horsepower is the total. As I'm getting older, I like the Mark III. It's a little bit wider, it's a bit more comfortable. You know, the nicer to drive around in than the Mark II is a little bit smaller. 
The coolest thing, I guess, is just uh, the fact that it's, it's pretty fast and it handles really well. Adam, who built it, I think, built it around these wheels and tires. So it has 245 35s on this car, which is pretty wide for a Mark III. So it sticks to the road pretty good. h and coils help it go around corners really fast. So it's just really fun to drive. It's not over powerful. It's only about 310 wheelish, I think it was, but it's, it's fun. It's always a boost. Like I was saying, it has the R32 interior in it, front and back. This is a VR6 with a turbocharger on it. I know it has around 310, 315 wheel horsepower. It makes it kind of fun. It's getting ripped out anyway, and the R32 turbo motor is going to be going in here with the uh, Haldex drivetrain. This, this the Mark II I actually built myself, yes. It was a shell that I bought, took it all the way down on the underbody to the, to the metal, cleaned it all up, fixed all the rust, pour 15 to it, put sound deadening everywhere. I always wanted a GTI, but something that got good gas mileage, so I put the uh, AHU, which is the TDI, out of the Mark III in it. Currently stock, but it will be getting some upgrades later to give it a bit more power. This is my daily, yep. but, it, but it has a lot of cool, intricate little features that most people don't neat realize power pop out windows power everything power lock so it's got all the creature comforts of a new car but a mark ii that gets 50 miles a gallon so we're gonna do a quick walk around and show you some of the cool things that i like about my mark ii it has a factory with car rows it has a digifers cluster which most people i'm sure know what they are so this has the uh the vortex sensor console i put the loop hole cup holders in them I like CDs, so I have a CD holder, and then I also made a switch panel so I could have all my power windows, front, rear, and uh, sunroof all in one place. We drew this up and printed it and mounted it in there. I have all the creature comforts. But just try to make it look a little cleaner. Uh, the airbox comes off a of Seat Toledo from Europe, a diesel, so it kind of fits in the Mark II chassis and makes it look kind of clean. I used the Mark VII coolant bottle just because it looks a little cooler and it's a bit more squished just little subtle things that have changed designed up and made the headlights using uh, Morimoto LED projectors so the housing on the back is plastic that I drew up and printed and then the actual projector itself is made by Morimoto so these are the uh, the headlights that I have in my Mark II that are designed up I wanted something that was way brighter drew up my own housing mounted a uh, LED projector in it. That's how it is. I like how you say it so casually, it's like anyone can do that. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it comes with uh, 20 whatever years of design experience. It's just, you know, it's easy to me now. I did everything on the Mark II myself. Anything that I made, I, I drew it up in the CAD system. Uh, I have a 3D printer, so I printed it. I have a plastic welder, so I welded stuff together. Um, any floor stuff that was rotten i cut out and pulled it back up the only thing i haven't done is painted it that's the original paint that's on the car i just painted the underbody and uh, rust areas the plan for this thing is to pull the drivetrain and i have a, a vnt 17 turbo which with the stage 3 chip and injectors and everything else should be around about 170 wheel horsepower somewhere 280 torque which is a far step from the 90 horsepower it came from the factory so it'll make it a lot more fun but still retain somewhat good gas mileage these are Borbit type a 16 by 9s all around with uh, 215 40 16 tires on them so i wanted something that would grab stick you know throw on corners and I guess a lot of people don't run the 16x9s the just because they're really wide and you have to run a really skinny tire to get them under the arches. Whereas I modified all the arches and made clearance for them. So these are some of my projects. There's more that you can see, but this is where the hoarding takes place. Uh, this is my uh, rotisserie that I made from some scrap metal from where I used to work. So I can put a car up and flip it completely over and clean the underbody of any rust. This is another one of my little cars. Unfortunately, somebody hit me and I haven't got it fixed yet, but this is uh, pretty much everything you can do to a VR6, normally aspirated. So it's a, essentially a three liter, big valve head, trick intake, modified downpipes, pretty much everything you can do to get power out of it. 
So the Shrik intake is a variable length runner intake manifold and that changes the length of the intake runner. There's a flap in here that'll turn and it has a computer control so you can choose what RPM it engages. These are pretty rare. Yeah, these are, they, don't, they no longer make them um, and you don't see them come up for sale very often. They're pretty, it's a pretty rare part. It has modified gears, so it has the 393 ring and pinion, so it gets off the line pretty quick. Uh, I mean, it's not terrible fast, but it's yeah. it's still a fun car. You may have noticed it's got slightly bigger brakes on it. Uh, Porsche four piston. Uh, this is my track car, so I like to drive fast, and I try to do it on track and not on uh, the street. So this is a. Lexan window, nothing inside Mark II, other than a couple of seats in a cage. Has a modified 1AT in it, limited slip diff, 230 wheel horsepower, which is not bad for a light car. Do you drive much? Ah, <laughs> uh, not that much these days, but I try to get out as much as I can. This is what we call the Easter egg. This is a friend's car that built it and then could never get it to run right. And then I bought it off him as a shell. Uh, it's eventually going to get a 24 valve VR6 in it. Really clean. It's got a nice interior. So this is uh, this is the Mark II I probably owned the longest. Um, put this one together quite a while ago just to get it running, and then it's just kind of stayed in this state forever. But it's a three-liter big valve head VR6 turbo, somewhere around 350 to 400 wheel. That's what it should be. It's a lot of fun. But as you can see, it doesn't get used a whole lot. It's a little, uh, a little dirty. It just, just sits here for a while and just gets dirty. <laughs> I guess that's what happens when you own 17 cars. That's what happens when you have a lot of cars. You don't have time to work on them all. Or drive them Or all. drive them, yeah. <laughs> but it is a fun car. That's my old race car that's now just rotted out so badly. Oh. That's why it's, it's, <laughs> that's going to get scrapped. I just haven't, I haven't done that yet. So these are kind of parts cars or just ones I collect. Just pick them up cheap and eventually do something to them. Make sure there's no snakes in it. And it's got a 50 mil intake. Apparently it's got an LSD in the trans too. It's got a, I think it's got a Shrek oil pan on it. It's got a lot of goody, goody parts on this thing. Someone spent a lot of money at one time. It sits here until it gets built one day. Um, I get a lot of my parts from, from Europe. I have uh, family in England still, so I'll, I'll buy stuff. The people that won't ship to the US from Germany or other European countries, I have it shipped to England. And then when family members come and visit, they usually bring me stuff. So that's how you get your that's, parts? That's how I get a lot of my parts. <laughs> if they're too big, I just have to ship, put them in a box and ship them. Like all the rally spares I had to bring over were shipped in a container. Do you find oh, stuff I, that you I, I buy stuff weekly. I always find something to buy, something to have for a project later on. Bought another rally setup, rally front end the other day from Russia. So I, I, I buy a lot of parts, store a lot of parts. I like to, I want to keep my cars going for a long time. So if I see things, see things for sale, I'll buy them. Some rare stuff, some, some just crazy things, like I'll buy hundreds of brake pads and rotors and axles just, just to keep my car going. Cause eventually parts for Mark IIs will be gone and I ain't trying to find parts for them. So I try and think of everything consumable wise I'm going to need to keep them going. Some parts are definitely getting a lot harder to find. The Mark I and Mark II's are starting to die out and people aren't going to make components for them. I mean, Volkswagen doesn't have a lot of parts for them anymore. All right, thanks for having me. Hope you enjoyed uh, looking at my little collection of cars. And... <laughs> really, Sebastian? Really? All right, thanks for having me. I hope, uh, hope you enjoyed looking at my small collection of Volkswagens and maybe inspire you to build a Mark II one day. <laughs>